relaxing, right. not going anywhere. Don't. Right, yeah, because yeah. we know a lot of across the Houston area, they're already seeing the rain, right. but it should pick up. It, the wind will pick up, the rain will pick up, the severe weather threat will start to pick up as well. So you've been talking throughout the night with Gage, Mario Diaz, who are down at the coast right now. You saw how fast those conditions fell apart where Gage was down towards Surfside, right? They had to get inside because it was just not safe anymore. So I think that's a good indication of you want to put sort of a one to two hour lag window for what we'll likely start to see as we move further inland, right? Mm -hmm. So the storm itself, or at least the outer eye walls, are starting to approach the coastline, right? So that's where we're really going to start seeing some of the heaviest rain look down towards Lake Jackson and notice that we already have a flash flood warning that is in effect. I expect to see many more of these today and uh, not only that, but as I said, we're going to start to see the wind pick up. It, the roads are very slick. I can tell you from driving in this morning, uh, 59 was very, very slippery. So these are only going to get worse. OK, so let's set the stage. If you're joining us now, we appreciate that. Stay put at home. Cannot stress that enough. This is going to be a fast moving storm. There's the center of it. You can see it right there. Let's jumping a little tight around that just so you get a better sense of what we're seeing right around the center of the eye. OK, so there's our flash flood warning. You can see it over there towards Sweeney over to Lake Jackson. But let me jump offshore right now. And this is what we were just talking about. So the center of the eye. Now, two things with this. It is still a category one hurricane, so it has strengthened overnight. However, notice that the eye isn't necessarily very coast centric, right? So it does look like somebody just took a cookie cutter and just carved out the center of it. That's actually going to benefit us just a bit, meaning that this is probably starting to interact with some of these outer barrier islands here towards Matagorda Bay. And so it's chewing up the center of that, making a little more of a bit of a waggle or a wobble, if you want to think of it that way. That said, there are still probably wind gusts, as you saw Roger and or excuse me, saw Oscar and Gage just a bit ago talking. They were clocking nearly 100 mile an hour wind gusts. So if we kind of back this out and let's go back out here just a second and I'm going to slide up and I want to put this on a stop here just so you get a sense of what we're seeing. And here is what we have. So let me move that out of the way. This is our severe thunderstorm warning and that in particular is going to be anywhere from right around. Let's see what we've got with that there. That is uh, to Brazoria County. That's until 445, right? So that includes uh, areas around Lake Jackson, Freeport over to Bay City. So it's parts of Brazoria and in parts of Matagorda County. That's included there too till 445 in the morning. OK, so that's probably about the next two hours is what we're looking at right now. Now notice that we're starting to pick up over towards south of El Campo and into parts just north of Palacios. We're getting some flood warnings that are starting to pop up as well. I expect to see more of those, especially in Carolina. We're just talking about the fact that once all this heavy rain starts to slide off to the north here, uh, the Trinity River likely will see anything that's up on the north side there near Dallas over towards Lufkin and Tyler on the northern end of the Trinity is all going to head on back down to the coast. So we're not necessarily out of the woods just yet. So let me bounce around to a couple of different neighborhoods and I'll get you a sense of what we're seeing. Notice I do have the lightning turned on and right now we're only picking up about one or two strikes on this band right here. So if we jump a little tighter on that just to get a better sense of what we're seeing with that band, this is where we're seeing some of the heaviest, probably not only heavy rain, but right around Palacios is where we're seeing probably some of the strongest winds as well. Because again, the eye wall right about here just across uh, Matagorda Bay. And so is that slicing around Palacios and kind of swirling around. Remember, this is all going counterclockwise here. That's one of the things we're going to be watching is not only for some of these bands moving through, but a potential for some of these that also could see uh, a little bit of spin and rotation to it. Two other things to watch over towards Galveston. Let me put this back into motion here just so you get a sense of the timing on this of what we're seeing. You see how this band is starting to slide northward up on the western end of the island. Anthony made this point earlier this morning. I thought it was a great point. So if you missed it, I'm going to make it again. Remember over towards the seawall is over on the east end of the island towards the Pleasure Pier where our own, own Caflenti is, which we will get to here a little later this morning. But if you get over to the west end of the island there, so if we slide in a little tighter on here towards Jamaica Beach and over around Surfside, notice that there's no seawall. And so it is just at the brunt of everything that's coming on shore right now. And this is where we're going to start to see some problems in terms of not only the wind, but probably the storm surge that is going to be picking up. I've seen it between about one to two feet. Now it is going to raise anywhere from around possibly four to six feet. Would not be shocked to see it even closer to six to seven feet. So again, if you're just joining us, it's 235. It's meteorologist Justin Stapleton. We're going to stay on the air right here at KPRC2 and at KPRC2 Plus throughout the morning just to get you a sense of what we're seeing. So I'm going to bounce around to a couple of other areas 
just to show you what we're seeing all across the area. So we've got Sugarland over to Needville, over towards Wharton. If we put a stop on this here, let's just look over our south side, also looking at a potential for some heavy rain as well. So that's anywhere from right outside of Pearland as you get towards there and Alvin. Same thing as you go uh, anywhere. There's Mont Bellevue. And then, of course, as you go right here from Sugarland down to Pearland over to Manville. So that's 288 across parts of Highway 6. Sliding on over, there's Brookside Village to Pearland. There's League City, this bullseye that you see, and you'll probably see this a lot this morning as well. That's the actual radar site over for the National Weather Service office in League City and Dickinson. And then right now, we've still got plenty of heavy rain here from Manville over towards Hillcrest as well. A lot going on over the next couple of hours. So let me show you this real quick, and then I'm going to jump over to Caroline Brown. She's got a lot more on some of the winds that we're seeing with the storm, which is going to be one of the other threats today. So two o'clock advisory it's max winds at 80 miles an hour. So it's still a category one hurricane. Do expect it to make landfall probably somewhere near Sargent within the next hour to 90 minutes. And then here's part of the issue by 8 a.m. That's moving northward up across parts of I-10. So we're talking about Katy, uh, Fulshire, Brookshire areas across western Harris County in towards Fort Bend County. This may still be a category one hurricane as it makes landfall. Notice it'll start to dissipate very quickly and slide up towards Tyler and Shreveport by later on this afternoon in this evening. And once it's gone, that should be the end of it. But cannot stress enough, the next four to six hours are going to be very dangerous in many locations. If you do not have to get out, please do not. We're going to talk more about current winds, wind gusts that are starting to pick up as well in many spots. And of course, that storm surge. But right now, let me get over to meteorologist Caroline Brown, who's got more deep diving on what we're seeing out there. Caroline? Justin, that's right. In fact, we saw a wind gust at Matagorda Bay of 75 miles per hour. That is considered hurricane force winds. So I want to take a closer look at those current winds coming down, especially closer to Matagorda Bay, the Palacios area. So let's show you what we're tracking. If we switch this over to velocity, this is going to give us an estimation of how strong these winds are. So right now around Sweeney, we're seeing winds about 51 miles per hour closer towards areas down around Bay City, 67 miles per hour earlier. I was able to find a gust potentially up to 82 miles per hour, and it's not just the winds. It's going to be the rain. These winds are bringing with it those rain drops sideways. So if we switch this over, this is just going to be in the last three hours for how much rainfall we've seen anywhere from two and a half to three inches of rain. We'll put a few more locations on the map here. The closer you get to the coast, we've already picked up over three and a half inches of rainfall. This means areas like Surfside over towards Freeport, Lake Jackson, Angleton. It is going to be incredibly easy for us to get up to eight inches of rain today. And remember, that's rainfall and then we're going to see storm surge on top of it. As these bands are pushing on shore, they're pushing the water on shore with them. When we looked at Surfside from Hurricane Nicholas in 2021, Nicholas had winds of 90 miles per hour. We saw four to five feet of storm surge. So a nice gauge. You can't compare one to one, but certainly something we're continuing to monitor. So that storm surge doesn't even count the additional rainfall. In fact, we do have a flood watch currently in place for all of Southeast Texas. This is through Tuesday morning, likely along a lot of those rivers. We can expect this to be extended, but that's because five to 10 inches of rain, that's going to be widespread. Isolated locations, especially closer towards the coast, up to 13 inches of rain. So just in the last 24 hours, Bay City almost four inches of rainfall and Justin, we have a lot more rain coming down really over the next 12 hours here. Yeah, we certainly do. So we're not out of the woods just yet. Now, aside from the rain threat, there's also the wind threat as well. These are the current wind speeds. If you're watching us across the Katy area, Brenham out towards downtown, you're saying, well, it's not too bad. It's a little breezy, but we're at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Look down towards Palacios. That's the current wind speed. That's sustained winds, by the way, 28 in Bay City, 26 in Lake Jackson, all of 
of the water starting to get pushed across parts of the bay down to Galveston at 30 and Palacios at around 43 and the wind gusts even higher than that wind gusts starting to approach 30 miles an hour across downtown 45 in uh, Galveston 57 in Lake Jackson and 71 right there in Palacios you can see where the center of the storm is coming on shore and that's where a lot of our crews are have been getting blasted for the last couple of hours let me send it back over to Sophia and Amy guys I know we've got people spread all over that we're going to take care and show you eyes and ears on the ground of what's happening throughout the rest of the night here.